All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. We're gonna talk about something Teddy Atlas, the very famous trainer, had to say about Canelo Alvarez. Do not shoot the messenger, but he says, look, man, getting tired of these easy fights for Canelo Alvarez. Want to see Jamal Charlo, David Benavidez. Let's talk about that in this video. Welcome back to the channel, boxing fans, for another really good boxing conversation. Make sure at the end of this that you leave your comments and your thoughts in the in the comment section. Uh, like the video, share the video, all that good stuff, man, so we can keep the conversation rolling. Do not shoot the messenger on this. There's a lot of very, very sensitive Canelo Alvarez fans out there. Teddy Atlas, who is the uh, former trainer of, I think he's a former trainer of Mike Tyson, former trainer of Teddy of Tim Bradley. Uh, currently has a podcast uh, on on YouTube, a very successful, a very good podcast uh, where he talks boxing on YouTube. Also used to be a, a head commentator or one of the commentators on ESPN for years and years and years. Uh, is not very impressed with what Canelo Alvarez has been, been doing lately and is saying um, that he's getting a little tired of it and said, look, man, you're not... And see, the thing about uh, Teddy Atlas is Teddy Atlas will... For a majority of the time, man, will tell you really what he thinks, man. Very famous for being very blunt and going against the grain. And in this instance, he is one of the very few people that you will hear on on mainstream television or one of the mainstream people that are saying that they're not satisfied or impressed with what Canelo Alvarez has done over the last year, uh, becoming undisputed champion at 168 pounds. Now, I think he may be a little unfair in this regard, but this is what his logic is. He's like, look, um, Canelo Alvarez has been uh, you know, fighting a bunch of guys that do not have a lot of talent. And, you know, goes through the guys that he, you know, Billy said, Billy Joe Saunders, you know, he was doing decently into the fight in the fight until it was all over. But he's talking about Yeldemir, uh, Callum, uh, Callum, uh, Callum Smith. Um, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, Caleb Plant, who he just fought. Um, and, you know, the, the guys that he's been fighting since he got on that really big contract with DAZN. And he said, look, man, he's getting paid 40, 50 million dollars to fight guys with no talent. And he's sick of seeing it. And then he then he puts out the name of a couple people that he said that he would like to see him fight. Now, what he says is he says Jamal. She talks about Jamal Charlo and he talks about David Benavidez. And just so that we're clear in what he says, and we'll talk about it a little bit after I say it. He's not saying that these guys will beat Canelo Alvarez. He's saying that Jamal Charlo is is a talented fighter. He said he's far from a perfect fighter, but he's got talent. He's got enough talent and enough power and enough ability to make him, Teddy Atlas, want to see the fight and wonder if something out of the ordinary can happen. He said same thing for David Benavidez. David Benavidez is not as good a fighter, a boxer as Canelo Alvarez, but at least he has a certain level of talent uh, in the boxing ring that may allow him to do something unexpected in the boxing ring. So at the same time as saying that he favors Canelo Alvarez to beat these guys, he's saying, that, look, let's at least get him to that level of fighter, that level of talent, so that we can see these fights and see him fight against the best competition that there is. And I think that that is a very, very fair point. Myself, and I've said this many times, despite, and I don't know how many of you guys that are real Canelo Alvarez fans get this far along in the video, but I've been saying this for a long time. As far as those weight classes from 160 to 175, he is the best, or at least to 168. I can't say for sure at 175, but I do believe even up, even up to 175, he's probably the best fighter in those division, and I would give him the advantage or, or favor him to beat anybody in those divisions. However, that does not mean that Canelo Alvarez is fighting the best competition that, uh, right now, because he's not. If you look at the guys that are the best in those divisions, without a doubt, he's not fought any of them, with the exception of maybe... Gennady Golovkin a couple years ago down there at 160. But the best guys at 160 are Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andrade. 
and they could be, and you may say that you favor Canelo Alvarez to beat them, but Canelo Alvarez is going to have a puzzle to solve with those guys in, or, in order for there to get in order for them to get there. Take for example, you know, a perfect example of this of the same scenario is Floyd Mayweather Jr. When Floyd Mayweather Jr. had the Showtime contract, for years and years, people were saying that he was not fighting the best competition that he needed to fight. He needed to fight Manny Pacquiao. My personal take on it was, yeah, he's going to beat Manny Pacquiao. He's a better fighter than Manny Pacquiao. I think he'll beat Manny Pacquiao, you know, pretty much every day of the week and twice on Sunday. But they were correct in regards to the fact that that Manny Pacquiao was the best competition available for Floyd Mayweather Jr. And so when people come to the chat or people say it, you know, in the comment section, or I see people do videos and they mention the and they mention that. Canelo Alvarez will beat the, uh, Jamal Charlo and talk about what's wrong with Jamal Charlo. Or if they talk and say, oh, well, he'll beat David Benavitez and they talk about what's wrong with Dave, David Benavitez. They say, oh, he'll beat Demetrius Andrade and they'll talk about what's wrong with B Demetrius Andrade, right? I'm saying all of that can be fine, fair, and good. However, the question still remains, who is he going to fight? Now, as we're going right now, I don't think, you know, that Canelo Alvarez is going to change path. I think Canelo Alvarez is going is still probably going to take the the least resistance for the most money. Now, he had an excuse to do it before and where somebody can say, well, look, um, he was going for undisputed. And those are the guys that had the belt. That's fair. And I think that that's fair. And if you put that argument to Teddy Atlas, I think that he may think it's fair or not, because his take is usually he doesn't care about those alphabet about the alphabet soups and the commissions or whatever because they will they will put people in situations to be champions that probably shouldn't be there perfect example of that is stripping david benavitez in the middle of COVID for not making weight by the wb you know by the wbc though regardless you know it is time for canelo and it's going to be real interesting to see because he says he may want to fight three times next year if he fights three times next year and he keeps those belts at 168 pounds and it winds up being guys like J John Ryder or, you know, some uh, Maurice Selecki or somebody else like that. Um, look, man, it, it will. Be, I think it, it will. It is a legitimate. It is a legitimate request. If he's the best fighter in boxing and the number one guy in those weight classes to see him fight the other top guys in that weight class. Otherwise, I do suspect that his numbers, if he has to go on pay-per-view, people will do like just like Teddy Atlas said he's doing, which is pretty much just tune out. But you know, it, it could, I could be wrong. Maybe he's reached, you know, like just this megastar status where his fan base is going to tune in and he's got so many fans that it doesn't matter. But for the sake of his legacy and when he talks about legacy and making history and all that, um, history, people do look back in history and say, hey, look, who did you fight and who didn't you fight, right? Floyd Mayweather Jr., even though it's not an overriding criticism for his, for his career, still has people talking about the fact that he didn't fight Sean Porter, didn't fight Keith Thurman when they were in the welterweight division and contenders when he was still fighting and he chose to he chose to tap out against Andre Berto uh, against Andre Berto instead of fighting better fighters, right? So same thing will apply. I think that will apply to you know, it applies to old school fighters way back in the day, right? Like Jack Dempsey, people, Jack Dempsey, a lot of people will bring up when they say, well, how great a fighter is Jack Dempsey? People say, how great a fighter could Jack Dempsey be when he didn't fight guys like Sam Lankford? He wouldn't fight, you know, obviously he didn't get a fight. He didn't give Jack Johnson a fight after Jack Johnson had lost to, um, to Jess Willard. Uh, so, you know, that stuff kind of hangs over your head. But anyway, I'll say once again, I think Canelo Alvarez is a terrific, terrific fighter. But at the same time, man, I'm glad Teddy Atlas said it. Since I ain't, so, so guys like uh, people on the YouTube ain't got to be the only ones to have mentioned that. Anyway, so that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.